Harry Sinclair should not have been an oil tycoon. His path to founding one of the largest oil companies in the country was unlikely. That's because in the late 1890s, Sinclair was operating a drugstore he took over from his father in Independence, Kansas. The pharmacist's life was a bit slow for Harry, who had the ambition and courage to take risks. It was that willingness to take risks that cost him the drugstore by the time he was 25, having lost it to speculation. Soon, young Sinclair began a new adventure just as the oil boom hit the plains of Kansas and Oklahoma. It was at this time he began buying and selling oil leases, which returned a small profit. As he worked to strike oil, his efforts began to finally pay off. In 1904, one of his wells in Kiowa, Oklahoma, paid out $100,000, which he reinvested in developing other oil wells. In 1907, his wells in Glenpool, Oklahoma, struck oil, and it was a huge producer. This event made Harry Sinclair a millionaire overnight, and the richest man in Kansas. This is where Sinclair Oil starts to take shape. Sinclair was now the largest independent oil company in Middle America, with five refineries that could supply the oil for the automobile revolution that was about to occur. Timing was key, and Sinclair Oil was positioned perfectly to take advantage of the transition from coal to oil fuel. In addition to finding and processing oil, Sinclair needed a way to move it, so he commissioned a pipeline to be built from Kansas to Chicago, which was a great success, serving 90% of mid-America. By 1916, Sinclair Oil had grown to become the 10th largest oil company in America. As the company entered the 1920s, the modern service station was born. Sinclair's first station opened in Chicago in 1922, offering gasoline, oil changes, tire repairs, and window washing. They also introduced restrooms at their Sinclair Superstations for travelers passing through. As the Great Depression approached, competition to serve the explosion of automobile owners increased, which began to erode gas prices. This was an especially hard time as profits began to fall. Then, Black Tuesday occurred on October 29, 1929. The Depression would force Sinclair to get creative in how they advertised. By 1930, Sinclair introduced the famous Green Dino to promote some of their lubricants. The dinosaur was chosen to connect back with how the fossil fuels they were selling were originally formed, in a time when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Initially, many dinos were used, but the one that became the most popular was the Brontosaurus. In 1932, Sinclair registered the dino as their trademark, and they set off to promote their brand at the World's Fair in Chicago in 1933. The Sinclair exhibit, with large lifelike dinosaurs, was a popular one at the fair, with 24,000 people walking through the exhibit daily. As Sinclair Oil continued to thrive through the 1940s and 1950s, more new products were added. During the early 1940s, Sinclair issued dinosaur stamps weekly at service stations across the country. The very first printing of stamp albums sold out within two days. Throughout World War II, hundreds of women even trained as service attendants at Sinclair gas stations, while most of the men were away fighting in the war. With the war coming to an end, civilian demand for oil really began to boom. The car culture of the 1950s made Americans want to hit the open road. With new motels and restaurants popping up along highways, it made leisure traveling fun. Families would load up the car or station wagon, and along their route, they could stop at Sinclair stations, which were easily identified by the dyno on their sign.
the company that Harry Sinclair had built was now a billion dollar business. Following his retirement in 1949, and later his death in 1956, the business was turned over to new leaders that would help navigate an uncertain future. Oil shortages led to consolidating operations and learning to do more with less. Although prices declined through the 1960s, Sinclair's earnings rose as the company streamlined their workforce. The Sinclair Dino was far-reaching. It appealed to kids and adults alike. The company once again held an exhibit during the 1964 World's Fair in New York with a recreated Mesozoic era that included nine life-size dinosaurs that used animatronics. The Sinclair Giant Dino Balloon could also be found at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade beginning in 1966 and running through the end of the 70s. Since the 1970s, Sinclair has changed hands a couple of times. The oil crisis during this period made the oil business very volatile, so Sinclair first was sold to the Atlantic Richfield Company, and later it was purchased by Earl Holding, whose company continues to own it today. There are still thousands of Sinclair gas stations that feature the giant green dino across the Midwest and Western states. As children, many of us may have even had Sinclair toys that made us loyal to the company. From plastic dinos to toy fuel tankers, we have to admit that the friendly Brontosaurus was a fitting choice to represent the Sinclair brand. With over 100 years in the oil and fuel business, Sinclair remains a leader in the industry. And as you drive the highways of America, you will most certainly still see a Sinclair gas station in your travels. Feel free to share your own memories of Sinclair gas stations and the dinosaur that made them famous. As always, thank you so much for watching.